with a waterfall pour, your canvas is up like this. So as you pour it, the gravity is pulling the paint in one direction, so it creates a really unique design. Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my Fluid Art channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today I'm doing a waterfall pour, and if you don't know what a waterfall pour is, I first learned the technique from Julie Cutts of the YouTube channel Pouring Your Heart Out. I must have watched this video five years ago, and I really like this technique. It's very simple, but it creates a really unique design. It's very similar to a straight pour or a ring pour, in that you've got paints, mine are mixed with Floetrol, um, but your paints do not have silicone in them, and you stack them up in a cup and then you pour them out that way. The difference with a waterfall pour is that your canvas is up like this as you pour it out. So as you pour it, the gravity is pulling the paint in one direction, so it's particularly good for a long skinny canvas. Um, and then once you've poured out all your paint, then you tilt it to stretch the rest of the paint out. So I've done a few of these in the past, I really enjoy it. This is a waterfall pour right here. This is actually one that I'm trying to reproduce, but a little bit bigger. So I've got a 12 by 24 inch canvas, instead of that's a 10 by 20. So it's a little bit bigger, trying to brighten up my space a little bit more. So I've got similar colors to what I did with that one. So I've got some black, metallic silver, two different blues, two different greens, to try to get this really nice, I just love that color scheme. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm gonna pour it with this. This is so clean. I don't think I've ever used it. I bought it for painting with, for doing ring pours, and I just, I haven't done it. So the cool thing about this cup is because it has a narrow spout, you can pour that way if you want a really thin stream, but you can also pour out the side of it more like a standard cup. So I think most of the time I'm going to be pouring out the side because I like having a wider band of paint coming out. But then at the end, to be able to narrow it down, I want to be able to have that option open to me. So that's what I'm going to pour with. I think that's all my details. Let's make a painting. I forgot to show you my paint consistency. So my paint is all mixed with US Floetrol. This is the consistency. So it flows nicely. You see it's, it's kind of thick. I would call this a medium. So it makes a mound that disappears in a couple seconds. It's not really thin. The thing with a waterfall pour, if your paint is too thin, you won't have nice definition in your layers. If the paint is too thick, you won't have interaction between your paints. So you wanna to try to find that balance where it's thick enough, but not too thick. This is what I'm going for today. Like I said, it's been a while since I've done a waterfall pour. Um, if I don't have a lot of reaction, then maybe you'd want it to be a little bit thinner than what this is. But let's go ahead and layer up our cup here. I want there to be a lot of black and I probably should have had more black paint than the other colors, but black is a nice solid color. It kind of dominates. So I think... How do I want my layers? I think we'll do... the darker blue and green. And then some black. And then maybe some silver. And then the lighter blue and green. That way we don't have sections that are all blue or sections that are all green but no matter what section is getting poured out, there's gonna be blue in there and green in there, but some are brighter and some are darker. Okay, I'm gonna keep layering this up. 
Because this is a 12 by 24 inch canvas, I would typically say the amount of paint you need is you multiply the length times the width and then you divide it by 16. So um, that comes to about 18 ounces of paint. Is that right? The other, the other way you can check it is four by four inch squares. So we have three of them this way and six of them this way. Three times six is 18. So yes, 18 ounces is about what I want, which is gonna be about two thirds of the way up this cup. These colors are layering beautifully. That is the nice thing about thicker paints. What did I do? Blue, then green. Now I'm going to do green, then blue, just for fun. Okay, we're getting close. We're at about 13 ounces of paint. The nice thing about this is it's got measurements. <laughs> measurements on the side of the cup. This is also a wider cup than I typically use, so there's so many more layers that you can see from the top, it's really cool. It is gonna be interesting to see whether the black is a dominating color or whether it's kind of an accent color because it's in among all the layers, but I don't know. So the other thing about lots of little layers, if you're doing a waterfall pour and you have larger layers, then what you'll find is those layers will pour out more or less in order. There, there will be, you know, they'll, they'll all, I'm not explaining this very well. You're gonna get the nice layering in your, um, in your pour, you know, the, the fine lines as the colors stack up, but in the middle, you, you are gonna get kind of a progression of colors, how you've stacked them. Now here, because I have pretty small layers, I don't know that I'm gonna have large blocks of color in that center line. It may just be all small, small sections of color, and that would be totally fine with me. All right, let's do one more round of these, because I'm almost out of black. Great. That is so pretty. Look at that. Okay, move these out of the way. Then for the for the tilt, you can use whatever you want to prop it up. So I've got a cup. This I think is too high. I think if I have it up like this, as I pour it, the paint's gonna flow faster than I can get it all layered out. So I'm gonna put it like this. And if I was really mathematical about it, I would measure this angle for you, but I'm not gonna do that. I would say a gentle slope. And if it's not moving fast enough for you, then move it up. And if it's moving too fast, move it down. The nice thing about a cup is it tapers. So you can put it lower or you can put it higher. I'm gonna put it right about there. I'm gonna pour this out the side. And as I pour it, I'm gonna move it forward and backward. Well, side to side here, but like, towards the flow of paint and backwards away from the flow of paint. And that's gonna make all those wonderful layers. Here we go. Okay, so my paint is kind of blobbing out instead of flowing, which might mean it's too thick might mean I'm moving the cup too fast. I'm gonna adjust my angle, try to get it to come out more neatly. These layers are insane. I don't have as much of the blue right now. Must be in a green layer. Okay, here comes some more blue. Also, my paint is flowing better now. 
I don't know why it was coming out in blobs earlier. the end it's always like don't mess it up don't mess it up get it to the end <laughs> but the very last bit always gets poured off the side so it's not like a ring pour kind of stress at the end and my paint is coming out in a thin enough stream that I'm not even going to turn it to the other side the cup that is I'm not going to pour it out the spout Okay. I'm going to let that continue to stretch just a little bit. This is so cool. So we had lots of bold layers right at the beginning. You can see those still around the edge. And then it turned much more, I would say muddy, but I think these layers are going to open up. And part of that's the olive green, which is a muddier looking color anyway. But we've got this beautiful black and blue jagged middle. So I'm really happy with how it's looking right now. Okay, it's almost, almost done. Okay, I'll actually call it good there. So I'll take it off of the cup. And then uh, the little bits of paint that I have in here, well, there's not much of it actually. So we'll find some of our other colors just to be kind of a flow extender over the corners. That way we won't have to pour quite so much of it over the edges in order to get those corners covered. Not that I'm gonna leave plain green corners, but having some paint on the corner makes it easier for the rest of the design to flow without losing too much of it. Okay, this is cool. I don't know that I've done a waterfall pour on a canvas this size. Usually I do 10 by 20s. This is fun though. All right, so this is obviously where we ended the pour, and I don't want to have this ring still in it. So as I start the tilt, we're going to pull it this way. But I'm going to torch first, because I see air bubbles, and I want those to become cells. So if you pop them before you stretch it, then those air bubble cells have the opportunity to grow. If you want them to stay tiny, then don't torch until the end. Nice. All right, we're gonna tilt it this way. And another tip I got from Julie. Uh-oh, I see a lump. <laughs> Watch the reflection of your paint. What am I trying to get here? And sometimes you can see if there's a bit of something that's not moving. There's a big old lump. And that'll slow down your design and make like a divot in the design. All right, so back to the tip. If you're stretching, don't go straight one direction. She calls it walking it back and forth. And that helps preserve kind of the shape of what you have without losing too much of it. All right, getting close to the end. So now at this point, I'm just going to go off this corner. Woo. And take it right back. Look at those layers. All right, now we're going to come to this corner. And back. Cool, really cool. Okay, I, my canvas must be sagging a bit. I sprayed it with water, but I can tell that the paint is bunching up on the center wooden slat here. You can probably see that too. I think as we stretch it, 
it'll move past that. I think it's just the heavy paint the canvas is not quite taut. All right, so let's start walking it back this way. And even if we get a little bit of a, a swirl pattern, that's gonna be okay too, but I'm gonna bring it down this way a bit to get rid of that. Okay, now back up. It's hard with these because you don't know which section of the canvas you should be looking at as you're stretching. You know, the one area that you're focused on, <laughs> there might be something else moving that you don't notice, so it does get challenging. All right. We're getting some cool wave action. It's because I'm not walking it, <laughs> but it's cool. I like it. All right, almost to that corner. Come on. There we go. And back. All right, last corner to cover. And then we'll figure out how it needs to be balanced. I'm going to bring it back a little bit first before I send it back over this corner. That way we don't lose too much over the end. I don't want to lose all that blue swoop if I can help it, but it might get too... Yeah, we're going to have to lose it. It's getting too squashed. And back. Well, this is a very interesting pattern. So let me just set it down and look at it for a second because my arms are getting tired. It's really cool. My favorite is the blue and black. There's so many layers in here. I'm gonna torch again and then think about, do I wanna stretch it down so that the blue and black covers the entire thing? Or do I wanna bring it back this way so that the blue and black doesn't dominate as much? Those are the questions that we have to answer. Well, I must say, as cool as this part is, I think the blue and the black center is the best part of this. So I'm gonna try to stretch it so that this blue comes all the way to the end. And then we'll see about balancing out the rest of it. So I'm just watching sort of the whole layer of paint and getting it moving slowly down. Don't want it to get out of shape. So now that the blue has touched the edge, I'm bringing it back so that the weight of the paint can kind of center itself across the whole canvas and not be all over on one end. I'm liking the way this is looking. It's looking more centered now instead of like really weighted to one end. Let me look at this for just a second. Yeah, I think this is it. I think because our main flow of energy, it touches this side and goes across, and we've got blue that goes all the way across, and we've got blue that's over here, but kind of our largest design is here in the middle. Instead of it being so heavily blue here, um, we've got this really interesting swirl right in the middle, which I think balances the whole thing. So I'm gonna cover my corners and then give you a close up. Okay, this is so cool. I love the rippling design flowing through there. It doesn't look too static at all. So look at these layers. What looks like kind of bland color is actually just layer upon layer. And so much of that is silver and that will shine when it's dry and varnished. But yeah, even down here in what you would think is the boring section, layers, lots of silver beautiful patterns. 
and then the really bold middle. I love that blue, but I also like that there's green in there with it. And then up against the black, it's just really striking. Got some nice cells there. Those are probably from air bubbles. Some of it might be from the paints reacting. Some of it might be from air bubbles, but it's really, really pretty. And I love how it turned out. Let me show you how it looks when it's dry. All right, the painting is dry. So it did dry darker. The olive green in particular is darker than it was while it was wet. And the black, I had plenty of black. I didn't need to be worried about that. So we can see the silver much better now that it's dry. And the whole, all the paint is reflecting the light, so it's hard to see exactly what's going to be shimmery. When this is varnished, the metallic will pop especially. So we still have lots of these layers. So it's very beautiful. But because it's so many, like, really, really thin layers, I don't think it's going to read really well from a distance on a wall. So I'm not going to use this one in my studio, even though I really like it. So I love the blue in the middle. I do like that pop of lighter green there and some of those lighter cells. So it's really pretty, and I don't know if this is the best way for it or if it should be, you know, vertical or maybe the other direction. I kind of like it that way or even completely upside down. So I don't know. Let me know which way do you like it best. Thanks for joining me for this waterfall pour video. I really like this technique and I would love to try it again with these same colors, but what I would do this time is I would make thicker layers in the cup to try to have uh, less of the fine lines and more big bold patterns of color. But I hope this inspired you to try something new and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys!